post captioning for tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. Let's send it upstairs. Here's Butch Goring and Howie. I missed you. Here's Howie Rose. <laughs> well, right back at you, Peter, but I see that everything was just fine. Everything was going very well, Howie, and, and uh, good sight views tonight. It's not as good as it was in Dallas, but the team is playing really well, and Kevin Poulin has played outstanding, really settling in as a, as a number one goaltender, and I will have to wait and see when the Bokoff gets back. And I don't think that's too far away, but, boy, he's done his job and given his chance, uh, his team a chance to win. And this man here, I'll tell you what, what a goaltender he is after a year off. He's still as sharp as a tack. And technically, Tim Thomas is an ex-Islander. Technically, that is. And off the draw, the Islanders immediately send it out from behind the blue line. Now the question is, did that uh, deflect? And it did. And so there'll be a face-off just outside the Islander line is everything that Jack Capuano has drawn up recently, although not without some occasional angst, has gone well. Yeah, he's really done a marvelous job. But the other night he played uh, two lines for almost the entire third period, so really went to the whip to try and find a way for his team to win a hockey game, and it, it worked out extremely well for him and his assistant coaches. A couple of ex-Islanders up on that first line. Here's one of them, Brad Boys, playing it across, getting a return, sending it across again, and they score! Well, it's the non-ex-Islander on the top line as Alexander Barkov finishes to make it one to nothing off a feed from Brad Boys just 32 seconds in. A uh, terrific two on one, but uh, Andrew McDonald collides. Watch him in the middle of your screen as, as the puck right now. There's the turnovers that hits him and he just falls right over. Now it's the quick two on one. And a real nice give and go with Boys and Barkoff, and that's an easy one for Barkoff to finish off. Real nice job of back and forth, back and forth. And Ryan State's not able to prevent one of those passes. In an ideal world, you gotta be able to Keep that puck in front of your goaltender to give him a chance, but Barkoff is an empty net. And bad start for the Islanders, but it seems to be the normal as of late. Yeah, that seems to have been where they're most comfortable lately. Thomas Fleischman dumps it out to center. Thomas Hickey for the Islanders plays it back the other way, and then the Panthers send it in. Oh, he he sidesteps a hit from Upshaw. I was going to say how he didn't really want to turn the puck over in the neutral zone you know, so early in the period. And Andrew McDonald really knocked the puck off the back of uh, John Tavares' heel. In comes Franz Nielsen, drops to Bailey, back to Nielsen, quick shot, skip wide. Nielsen again sets up Bailey. Bailey coming out from behind, put it towards the slot. Brock Nelson had it slapped away. Bailey had his best game in, in, in a probably a month, How He didn't get a lot of production as far. He did get an assist, I believe, but he skated extremely well. And looked confident, looked good out there, so expect him to get out of his doldrums uh, maybe even tonight's game so Barkov is it, it was his eighth goal of the year set up by boys at the 32 second mark as the Panthers keep it deep Matt Donovan for the Islanders chased by Kopetsky number 82 and it's kept in by Erica Branson number 44 the former first round draft pick of the Panthers and yeah. Grabner throws it back they have 10 former first round picks on this hockey club not all from the Florida Panthers draft but guys who have been drafted by other teams so there's a lot of talent out here there's a lot of size Howie not one forward is less than six feet tall so Islanders are going to have to battle along the boards and find ways to win those battles if they're going to succeed in tonight's game so the Branson protecting the facial injury with the mask and you just saw Peter Horacek the interim coach and he's got him turned around lately just as the Islanders have won nine of their last 12 including seven of eight the Panthers 10-5 and 2 in their last 17 games, despite the fact, Butch, that their special teams have been awful. Oh, their special teams are 29th and 30th. But I asked Coach Horchuk what he did right away initially. He said, I just wanted them to play faster and harder. I wanted them to look like a hockey team. They looked a little disorganized before that. So Andrew McDonald has it behind the Islanders net. A penalty. On uh, Huberdo sends the Islanders to the power play with a Poso feeding the slot. Now McDonald back for Vanek. And across to Tavares. The drive is deflected up over the net. A Poso and Tavares in on the forecheck. And it's Tavares wrestling the puck loose. He feeds McDonald at the blue line. Back to Tavares closing in. And it down low. A Poso holding it away from Weaver. Now back to McDonald. And Oposo had a little trouble holding on, and then the Panthers clear. This Islanders power play is brought to you by New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. Well, it should be interesting, Howie, to see how the 
Islanders handle Tim Thomas. Tim Thomas is a very aggressive goaltender. Will charge out of the net. Plays well above the crease. So the Islanders are happy deterred from shooting the puck. They've got to still shoot the puck and look to maybe get it past him on the outside. Penalty on Huberdeau was for holding. And now McDonald behind the net. A little too far for Nelson. And Thomas has to handle it. 39 seconds remaining to the Islander power play. And they've got Strom, Clutterbuck, Bailey up front. And it's Donovan feeding the corner. The Branson whips it around the board. That goes all the way down. And the Panthers will change the penalty killers. Josh Bailey had that puck bounce off his stick. So perhaps the puck is bouncing early on or playing with a little bit more spin than usual. They have had trouble with the ice down here in Florida. This is actually warmer than the building has generally been, but they usually keep it especially cold to try and help the ice situation. And there's a lot of humidity outside. Now Nelson plays it across to Bailey. Josh Bailey to Nelson. He's surrounded, gave it up. And here's a lead out of the box to Huberdeau. And he's in alone, straight in on goal. He shoots, pulling, got the right pad out. And the puck sits behind the net until it's pinned against the back of the cage. And there's no further play. And that puck turned over by the Islanders just as Huberdeau came out of the box. Now talk about timing as Huberdeau jumps out of the box. And he waited to see if his teammates were going to be able to get him the puck. And away he goes on a pass. And a lot of moves from Huberdeau as he came in on Poulin. Did everything he could. Watch him go left, right, left, right. And then back to his forehand. But Poulin wouldn't bite as he stretches those legs out you talk about having strong legs and strong groins look at Kevin Poulin as he just stretches right out there Kevin Poulin got in a little tighter I'm excuse me Huberdeau got in a little bit tighter but big save at this time this juncture of the game for Kevin Poulin Islanders control the draw Matt Martin comes to center he's Sezikis and McDonald on the fourth line that's from Brian Campbell number 51 worked it around the boards then Drew Shore was knocked down, and the Islanders recover. Martin floats a backhander that's steered into the corner, and Sezikis grabs it back. Down the boards comes Hickey. Took the hit. Martin covered for him at the blue line. Sezikis in working against Tom Gilbert, number 77. And the pass to Matthias on right wing. Sean Matthias against DeHaan. Woolen got a piece of that. But it's recovered by Shore. Sets up a snapshot that went wide from Matthias and looked like somebody got a little piece of that. Now it's Hickey steering it in. Stopped behind, behind the net by Thomas for Dmitry Kulikov. Another one of those former first round picks of the Panthers. This is the killer beeline as they're calling in Florida now with Bergenheim boys and Barkov. And right to the front of the net went to Varis Oposo. Whips it towards the slot. That's picked off. And out come the Panthers. It's Bart Cobb, number 16 for boys. Sean Bergenheim, the third player on that line, the ex-Islander, plays it across. And it's picked off by Oposo, who slams it off the board. Yeah, says he's really comfortable here in Florida. Really found his game in Tampa. And he's comfortable doing what he does, which is, you know, going hard to the corners. I often liken to him. John Tonelli when he played for the New York Islanders, so he's established himself as a pretty good four checker. Leishman rifled it through the slot all the way to the blue line, and that drive by Gilbert was blocked. There's going to be a penalty here against the Islanders. A hook will send the Panthers to the power play. Matt Parkner doesn't like the call, not but at he all. Off. <laughs> not, not at all. A few choice words for the referee, but Parkner's going to find himself in the penalty box. Doesn't take much when you're in front of the net as we watch Matt Cartner in the middle of the screen right there. Number seven, watch his stick, and it gets up into the midsection. And as soon as you do that, you can't use any kind of leverage, Howie, anymore. You know, where before you can have a little strength. You didn't have to necessarily turn your stick over and put the hook on him. You could use some sort of leverage. Not anymore. Your stick has to pretty much stay on the ice at all times. Now we talked about the Florida power play. It is ranked last in the National Hockey League, but so is the Islander penalty kill. So it's Fleischman at the blue line. Off to Brian Campbell. Former cup winner with the Chicago Blackhawks. DeHaan picks it off and clears. 5.57 the time of the hooking penalty. And the Islander penalty killing has been much better as of late. They're more aggressive uh, from an offensive standpoint. They, they're a little more passive when the puck's along the boards, trying to keep the puck out of the middle of the ice. So it's worked well for him. Upshaw jams it around the boards. Cal Clutterbuck 
But the bump there from Bukestad, number 27. Kopetsky, number 82, got it loose. And the puck just sits untouched in the corner. Penalty coming up to the Islanders here. They're going to be two men down. A drive from the blue line slapped away, and the Islanders going to find themselves shorthanded five on three for a minute and 14 seconds. And it looked like Franz Nielsen's going to go to the penalty box, and that's a sort of a double whammy for the Islanders. Franz, one of the better penalty killers for the Islanders. Well, two minutes for holding, listening to the referee's calls. Win Franz go, so a lot of tough call for him. And again, watch Franz Nielsen as you see him over on the left-hand side of your screen and then grabbing a hold with his left hand. You can see as he dropped his stick, so he said, if I don't have a stick, you can't play one either. And he gets caught. That's a bad argument. <laughs> so the Islanders now have Sezikis as the lone forward. McDonald in straight the defense. Boys, the Fleischman, tough save, made by Poulin. A beautiful save by Kevin Poulin as he's able to get an eye on that, that quick shot by Fleischman. Again, down low, down low, back up high. Look at the quick pass of Poulin. You can just see him kneeling down low. Watch him as he keeps his head down below the knees of Sean Bergenheim and able to find that puck. Minute remaining to the five on three. As the Panthers control, it's Campbell on the crisscross. Fleischman had it blocked by Strait, and the Caroms out of the zone. Sacrificing the body, Ryan Strait able to get into the shooting lane. Campbell right back in, tried to feed it down low. Strait got a piece of that with his stick. Bergenheim bothered from behind by McDonald. 38 to the five on three. Panthers keep the puck. Campbell with a screen in front, fed the corner to Boys. He feeds the slot. Wrist shot went wide by Campbell. And it curls back to the near boards to Fleischman. Now John Tavares telling the five on three. Haven't seen that before. 21 seconds left to the two-man advantage. Pass across. Fleischman denied. Put it back in front. Poulin whacked at it, but so did a Panther. It went behind the net. Retrieved by Boys. Now Boys waits. Plays it across. And it's snapped over the net by Fleischman. And carries out of play. They'll bring the face off outside. Six seconds remain on the penalty to Karkner. 52 remain on the penalty to Nielsen. Well, a good job by the owners keeping the Panthers beat. Racing to the outside and getting involved in the shooting lanes. But can watch Andrew McDonald, he blocks one in front of the side of the net, and John Tavares comes down and helps out. Bergenheim clears the puck away, but Fleischman had a golden opportunity, and that boys pass through the seam and zipped it over the net. So, Rounders' best penalty killer there was Fleischman. Huge draw here, but the Panthers control it. They have time to get in with a two-man advantage, but that's ending in two seconds. Good battle in the corner. Islanders recover the puck. Karkner's out of the box, and the puck sent out to center. Now it's a five-on-four for 40 seconds. Gilbert for Kopetsky moves to the Islander line. Set it to the corner. That's up Shaw against DeHaan. Covered by Kopetsky. Gilbert worked it across. Jovanovsky steers one that deflects to the corner. Now Kopetsky. Bukestad. A couple of shoves from Calvin DeHaan. And Bukestad was knocked down. Islanders have three defensemen on the ice, Holly. Eight seconds left to the power play. The puck comes hard around the boards. Out of the zone. Grabbed back by Gilbert. But here is Nielsen out of the box. As the Panthers go offside, the Islanders survive down five on three with 11-16 to go in the first. Tonight's cold hard facts are brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light and our friends at the Elias Sports Bureau tell us that the Islanders basically have the Panthers right where they want them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Again, uh, Jack Capano scripted that way, but they have an awful lot of success, an awful lot of confidence, and it doesn't happen very often. You can see that only six teams in the history of the National Hockey League have continued to be able to find ways to win on the road after they trail. That tells me one thing for certain with the Islanders, that they've really found a way to win hockey games, and I talked about it the last couple of games how early on in the year they were finding ways to lose games and now over the last uh, 10 games or so they're they changed their method they found ways to win and so gosh brings it into the islanders zone wearing number 57 back to kulikov his drive missed the net retrieved by nelson scoops it up the boards covered by kulikov but he gave it away bailey can reach it though shots are five to two florida and again, the Islanders had a little more than a minute during which they were down two men. And again, the Panthers with the worst power play in the league failed to convert. 
And they didn't really get a good opportunity other than Fleischman who zipped it over the net from the far dot. Matthias across to Weaver. Mike Weaver fires it around the boards as the Panthers change on the move. Oso gloves it down. Bergenheim chipping away at it. And now Calvin DeHaan with a load of confidence lately. Goes to the net, just missed that return feed, which was a shade out of his reach. And now Boys leads the Panthers out. Gilbert going down the right side, anticipating a pass that never got there. We'd be remiss, Howie, if we didn't talk about Travis Hamanek, who's not playing tonight with a but he's diagnosed as an upper body injury, so a little more ice time for some of the top three guys. Here's a Poso trying to get one to the front of the net that was blocked away. Barkov fired it ahead. And now Campbell returns to Barkov. And over the line to the slot. Surrounded, keeps it, and a shot is eaten up by the stick of Kartner and travels out of play. 9.38 remaining. First period in Florida. 9.38 left in the first period. Experience MSG game flow during every Islanders game. Follow along on MSG.com with live play-by-play -play and up-to-the-minute stats. You'll also have access to in-depth player cards, live tweets from the MSG on-air team, some of us, and extensive pre- and post-game video and analysis. Butch is in charge of the tweets up here, right? Yeah, yeah exactly right, Howie. I'm sure I'll hear from all my, what do you call them, the tweeters out there? <laughs> That's one word for it. The Branson shot it wide. Steve Summers calls. He doesn't like Twitter. He calls them Twitterers. <laughs> but that's not right. That's not fair either. No, the, the fans enjoy the, you know, hearing from, uh, from me. I know it's all different times during the game and after the game. And they're, they're always telling me they're waiting on you, Howie. They're, they're waiting I'll to get hear on back there one of you. these days. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'll get on there in due time. You, need, uh, you might need some fans. You never know. We all need a little more. That's exactly right. Islanders need a little more shots going towards the, the net. They haven't got much done offensively. Out, being out shot 6-2 to two with about nine minutes to go in this period. So slow starters again for the Islanders. Matthias goes to the net. That's steered away by Poulin. Matthias still digging for it. Got it loose to Bukestad. Tangled up with Kartner. Kartner gave him a pretty good run. Matthias back for the puck. He's that six foot six, Howie, so he's a pretty strong boy out of the University of Minnesota. You mentioned his, his uncle Scott. Used to play for Minnesota also. Yeah, played for the 1984 U.S. Olympic team under Lou Vero. And who had the most impossible job in probably the history of hockey, trying to do what Herb Brooks did four years earlier. Uh, in, in, impossible. Exactly right. Working along the boards, it's Bukestad. Checked by DeHaan. And then snapped around the boards by Strom. 8.03 remaining in the opening period. And Clutterbuck plays it behind Grabner. Thomas leaves it there for Campbell. That hits something along the boards, either a glove of the player on the ice Obviously not someone on the bench or else they would have stopped play. So Clutterbuck's able to throw it back in. Very close checking by both teams. That's something that uh, Peter Horacek wanted from his team. A little more structure. That's a word I've been hearing quite a bit from, from him. You learn a lot of it from Barry Trotz. He was an assistant coach for about eight plus years. Weaver's drive stopped by Poulin. Takes a little contact and holds on. And not a terribly busy first period so far for Kevin Poulin. Obviously the big save on, on Huberdeau, which really kept the score at 2-0. And again, Kevin Poulin, you know, he's a lefty, so he's going to fire the puck more often than not around that left side. Crazy hop, but there's the shot. Poulin gets back into position right away, just in case it gets out to the point. Makes a nice save, covered his rebound up. But you can just see how much more confidence he has in his play and just... You know, he's able to relax and, and, and get more done with less movement. I keep talking about, you know, that, that less movement stuff, and it's important for young goaltenders. The Branson, a shot that was initially off the stick of Barkov in the slot. He wound up carrying out of play. None of these, neither one of these two teams is especially good on face-offs. Both, for the majority of their sentiment, average less than 50%. So it's kind of a battle of, you know, the have-nots as opposed to the haves. So we'll see who can win those battles. Face-offs are always important, Howie, because it gives you that instant control of the puck. You don't have to try and chase it down. And more often than not, you get more done when you have the puck. 
Well, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? I would think so, but here's <laughs> Nelson. Plays it off the stick. I figured you answered your own question. Yeah, I'll just stay I... out of it. Boys played it out to center. Now ba Bailey hit Jovanovski with that dump-in attempt. And then Josh throws it back in. Now the Florida team is not a team that scores an awful lot of goals. They're 28th in the league as far as goals for. So, you know, you can get a couple of goals on them. You've got a much pretty good chance of beating them because they're not exactly what you call an offensive juggernaut. And they just got away with a bad giveaway there to a hot player, Kyle Oposo. And on a terrible change, too, was looked like a 5 o'clock rush hour down in New York City. <laughs> Tavares scooting to the slot, surrounded, gave it up. Campbell, though, tried to beat Oposo and Tavares, finally wristed it out to center. But uh, now McDonald goes across to DeHaan. Oposo finds Vanek at the line. Now to Tavares, pulls up, hits Vanek. One timer went wide off a of deflection. Looked like it hit Campbell in front of the net. Tim Thomas didn't even see it. Petsky chipped it away. Oso's got it again. But now Gilbert rifles one to Fleischman. And he'll bring it out to center. And a real nice play by Gilbert. Cross ice pass. Took a look before he went to the corner, so he's able to make that quick up to Fleischman. Somewhat dangerous when you pass the puck through the middle of the ice in your own zone, but Gilbert took a good hard look. Veteran player from the Edmonton Oilers. Now, Karkner in the Islanders zone with 5.20 remaining in the opening period. To a job watched by Martin. Now, just have the Sezikis. Martin, Colin McDonald line on. There's a drop for Huberdo, but he's wiped out by Sezikis. Islanders go the other way. Colin McDonald. In the corner, looking for Martin. He and Weaver get there together. Kulikov spun it free. And then it's pitched up to center. Covered by Sezikis. McDonald trying to locate the puck. Was found by Huberdo. And ahead comes Barch, number 21. Christopher Barch, former Dallas Star, New Jersey Devil. Now to Shore. New Shore, number 15, looking for Barch. That's broken up. Worked around, but not out. Jovanovski kept it in. He's hit by Clutterbuck. Shore against Strom. Gets a shot off. They score! Matthias was in front of the net and may well have redirected it past Poulin. The Panthers lead 2 to nothing. Uh, it looked like it went off either Strait, who was in front of the net, or Matthias. But again, Shore, six foot three, uses his size and strength to control the puck and handle it. You watch him here down, down below here. Look at him using his size and strength on Ryan Strom. And there it goes off the skate of Ryan Strait and deflects into the net. To, Matthiasen going towards the net, causing a disturbance. That might actually hit the Matthiasen skate and get a better look at it, but certainly didn't go straight in and no chance for Kevin Poulin, but a, a good job of Shore of shielding off Ryan Stolman and wheeling around on his forehand and getting it to the net. Talked about the size of the Florida forwards and the battle level that the Islanders are going to have to reach. Well, there was a pretty good example right there how they're using their size for their advantage. Which I think they want to take another look at this in Toronto. And it is, in fact, the case with the off-ice official handing the headset to the referee who will be in contact. And they'll let him know if they find anything that would indicate. I would imagine that the puck might have been kicked in. Well, off of Matthias and Skate, which was he was in front with Brian Strait. So now we'll get another look at it, whether it went off of Brian's or Matthias. And watch down at the bottom left of your bottom right of your screen. That puck's coming right across. And that, that's not... Put in real tower. There's a much better look here as we see that puck coming across. Well, that's hard to tell whether it goes off of Brian State or whether that was actually kicked in. His left foot was moving from left to right. That's Matthias. So I'm not sure what, uh, I don't think there'll be a change. Matthias didn't have a good look at it. Here's the decision. Say it's off a of straight skate and it's two to nothing Panthers. Yeah, that's what it looked like originally. That both feet were tied up. Both Matthias and, and Straight were in the crease and the puck carries in off of off of straight. Perfect example of why you should throw the puck towards the net when there are people in front. Now boys spun around in the corner by Donovan. 
As the Islanders have Franz Nielsen's line with Nelson and Bailey out. And it's left by Gabranson. Evidently off of Nelson. Yes, it was deflected. 406 to go in the first. 406 remaining in the first period. Thursday night at 7.30 on MSG Plus. The Islanders take on the Lightning. Live coverage gets underway with Visa Islanders game night at 7. Islanders Lightning Thursday night on MSG Plus. Thursday night hockey on MSG Plus is presented by Ram. Tampa Bay is in New York playing the Rangers tonight. Last check is a 2-2 tie in the first period. The Islanders are down 2-0. Seems to be a way too common theme for my like and Howie because I don't know how many times you can go to the well and find ways to come back and win games. The Islanders have been very successful as of late with that strategy. Vanek for Tavares. Remember, it wasn't long ago that the Islanders coach Jack Capuano referred to his team as fragile. Well, they certainly have shaken off that label recently. And now, if anything, they've been resilient. Uh, here's Boyd using it on a Dahan stick check. How do you go from fragile <laughs> to the complete opposite, or so it would appear, in about a month? Well, they went to the corner store and they got a whole big bottle of confidence, and then once they inhaled that, then they were the, a different hockey club. At least that's what they're always talking about. When they're not going well, it's every team's the same. As that shot was de deflected by Fleischman, it's always about confidence. Yeah, by the way, you know, we mentioned uh, Evgeny Nabokov earlier. He came out after the morning skate today and took a little spin. Got yeah, a little he took some in. shots during the, uh, the regular workout. There's the quick shot across by Fleischman. And Andrew McDonald is in position. Both six kind of collided at the same time, and the puck headed towards Poulin. Poulin was ready and prepared for that. But the Islanders, for whatever reason, have been very, very slow getting out of the gate these last ten games. And... Been able to find ways to come back. Butterbuck kept it on side. Goes to the corner against Kulikov. Strom is in there. Digs it loose. Clutterbuck surrounded, and that puck comes out. Well, that was a good play, though, by Clutterbuck and Ryan Strom. Getting the puck in deep, it always seems that the best things happen for the Islanders is when they minimize their turnovers at the blue line. So they've been guilty in the first period of a number of them. Kulikov just gave one away. Thomas a stick save on Strom and he'll hold on. Yeah, what a great job of Ryan Strom to get in there on the forecheck, just as we were talking about getting the puck in deep and forcing the Panthers to handle the puck. Good solid forecheck in. There's Kulikov. And again, it was Cutterbuck who got in there and forced the turnover. And Ryan Strom tried to get to the outside. As I said about Tim Thomas, it's hard sometimes because he's very, very aggressive. Look at with the good solid poke check, the Johnny Bauer style of poke check by Tim Thomas and Ryan Strom could not get to the outside and finish off the play. Strom's angry at himself. The guy who really should be mad is Kulikov. Straight with a shot, bounces on Thomas and winds up in the corner. But Thomas just took care of his defenseman, Dmitry Kulikov, with that very aggressive play. Tim Thomas has been doing that, particularly in the Stanley Cup run with the Boston Bruins in the year 2011. That's as good a performance as I've ever seen by any goaltender at any time. I mean, Tim Thomas was magnificent. I mean, you couldn't get a pee by this guy, and obviously the, the biggest reason that the Bruins were able to, to win the Stanley Cup, and now he's had a year off. He's rested, I guess, mentally and physically, and it's given his, his team some real scholar goaltending. So the draw outside the Islander line. Notch broke his stick on that draw. He's the centerman rushing over to the bench to get a fresh one. And Jovanovski steers it around the boards to the replenished Gotch. Now Bailey in front. Nelson had two shots. And the puck just beyond the reach of DeHaan. Now they're starting to go to work down in the offensive zone. <laughs> that was a dangerous play by DeHaan. Hanging on to the puck just a little long. And that's one thing he's done very well is he's been able to move the puck in a hurry. That's the only criticism that the coaches have of DeHaan. Is sometimes he has a tendency to hang on to it too long. Doesn't make his decisions quick enough. Uh, Gotch brings it in. His pass hit a skate. Comes back to Campbell in center. And thrown in by Gotch. Bergenheim in against Hickey. Hoso. Adam McDonald. Into the Florida zone. That's swept away by the stick of Barkov. Here's Boys making a move towards the slot. Hickey took care of that. 
Boys was knocked down in the process. And Oposo on the crisscross with Tavares across to Vanek. In front of Oposo! Rob, rebound Tavares! He stopped as well by Thomas. Tavares feeds it back. Donovan faked the shot. Now gets it again. Plays catch with Tavares. Try to get it to the front of the net. Bergenheim a week clear. Final minute of the period. And boys relaxes for a moment in the Florida zone. And a couple of huge saves by Tim Thomas. First on Kyle Oposo and then John Tavares. One thing about good goaltending, make the first save and put yourself in position again for the second one. Another turnover by the Islanders. And so Bukestad in, he scores! And Oposo came away. And it is three to nothing, Panthers. Well, that's the difference between the two teams right now. They're both giving the puck away. There's both plenty of opportunities. But Tim Thomas is out playing his opposite at the other end right now. Kevin Poulin's not able to stand, stop Nick Bukestad on that place. Watch the, watch the save here on Kyle Oposo. First one, I'll look at Tim Thomas get back up. And another save on Tavares. And then, of course, there's the turnover and a quick pass. And Scott Gustick, or Nick, excuse me, has got that big, long reach. He gets it over to the forehand in a hurry. And the two kids on the Florida team have scored goals. The Panthers lead 3-0 in this first period. Well, in Minnesota, that was not insurmountable. <laughs> And so the Islanders just digging a little deeper hill for them to climb in this game. They have been outshot 10 to 8 here in the first period. Fleischman bounces it in. The Hahn around the boards. Grabner chips it along for Clutterbuck. And Clutterbuck dead. Dead at the line by Weaver. Jammed in by Bukestad. And Calvin DeHaan comes back for it. Dehan trying to fight through traffic. Fine strong. They've got one going to the net. That was Grabner, but Thomas anticipating got a piece of it, and the puck carries out of play. Well, you wonder how he, you know, when you talk about consistency and how well the Islanders have played, and they're coming off a tremendous effort in, in, in Dallas, and then they come out in the first period and basically lay another egg. I mean, the turnovers and, and the bad decision making in the in the defensive zone, and you you wonder what goes through these guys' minds, and I'm sure that's what the coaches keep asking themselves as they prepare them for each and every game. And, you know, why is it that these guys dig themselves such a deep hole in this first period each and every time? Bukestad's 10th of the year from Upshaw at 9.24 gives the Panthers a 3 to nothing lead at the end of one period here at the BB&T Center in Sunrise. So we ask you to stay tuned for the first period intermission report presented by Ford. A lot of legends on hand in this building with Islander ties. Not any bigger than the man who was the architect of the dynasty, Bill Torrey, still a governor for the Florida Panthers. He was their original team president. He's going to join Peter in the studio. And we'll also look at first period highlights, see what's going on out of town. Panthers started early, lead three to nothing. Ford Report is next. Panthers leading three to nothing as we get set for the second period here in Sunrise. Our trivia question is brought to you by Cadillac. Going back just about a quarter century now. Five defensemen drafted first overall. Well, you know, one of them's in the building. We've already mentioned that tonight, but we'll get back to that a little bit later. Have the answer for you as we move along. Yeah, and it doesn't happen all that often. Most of the time, you're looking at taking a, a high end forward on the odd occasion of goaltender. So. It's a few and far between number one draft picks. So that guy there was number one, John Tavares. That guy there quite wasn't quite. First round pick for the New York Islanders is really coming to his own. So the second period about to begin. North Shore, LIJ, the official health system of the New York Islanders. Tavares line starts uh, against the Barkov line just as the game began. And now McDonald sends a poso up to the Florida line. He throws one at Thomas that he has to gather in. And just like that, there'll be a face-off in the Florida zone. Uh, one of the messages, I'm sure, in between periods from Jack Capilano to his team is stop turning the puck over. Get it in deep. Force these guys to play 200 feet. Work them down low. There's a reason that they're at the bottom of the league. Not all that great defensively. Now Brian Strait moves into the corner. But Boys recovers the puck, and it's Sean Bergenheim working against McDonald. He gets a stick on that. Boys goes after it. He's checked by straight. Uh, Oso wrestling with Bergenheim. 
Also trying to kick the puck free. But the Panthers around him. Kyle somehow holds on to it. Almost gave it away there. His boys had a piece of it. But now Tavares fails to control. He's grabbed back by Gilbert in the Florida zone. Boys across. This is Campbell. Thought about a shot. Now curls away. Panthers changing on the move. Barkov still on. And Branson has one stopped by Poole. He's able to hand off to DeHaan. A lot of times you'll see the official blow the whistle there, but Poole was able to keep it moving. No Panthers around them, so he gave him a little extra time, Howie, to, to make a decision. Rounders need the next goal. And if they get down 4 nothing. I'm afraid that they'll have an almost impossible pass to, to get back into this game. Kevin Poolin on a five-game win streak, so you know he's ready to continue on and try and make sure that the Islanders get an opportunity to score that next goal. Bailey, good work on the four-check. Dumping Gabranson. Played back by Nelson. And now it's Bukestad trying to get away from a couple of Islanders, and he turned it over. Very dangerous play by Bukestad in his own end. And up comes Fleischman with speed to the net, denied by the glove of Poulin. Well, Bukestad is a young player. He's a rookie. He's going to continue to learn his trade. And talking to him today, that's one of the things that he wants to become is a better two-way player. Well, he's got great offensive skill as we watch Fleischman go in on that backhand shot. It wasn't very firm backhand. It was kind of weak, as a matter of fact, but Kevin Poulin was able to make that save. But, you know, all young forwards, they've got to learn to play in their own zone. Their decision-making has to continue to improve. Ulikov jumped up and missed the puck. Now the Islanders start out with a lead for Strom. Ryan Strom to the backhander. That's stopped by Thomas. Recovered by Grabner. Tried to feed the slot. Kopetsky had it covered. And then Karkner drives one right back in. Weaver flings it around the boards for Florida. Ulikov took a hit from Clutterbuck. But now it's Weaver firing one that not handled cleanly by Kopetsky. Hopefully the Islanders can find their legs. How I didn't think they skated very well. Certainly their head wasn't working all that well, but when your legs aren't going too, it makes for a real bad combination. Petsky checked by straight. That turns it over. Stepping up for a good hit on Sezikis was Weaver. A centering feed broken up. Sezikis gets it back. His backhander was stopped in front. Then back to the blue line to McDonald. His drive tip sits around behind the net until Sezikis could grab it. Sezikis. Taking it wide now to get a little space. Now for Martin. Martin finds McDonald with room. He fires. Pad save. Rebound loose, but it's held by Thomas, who gets the whistle. Shoving involving, at least in front of the net, Gilbert and Colin McDonald. And then Martin. A pair of Panthers around him behind the net. In the middle of that, you've got... Donald and Gilbert still holding on to each other. Oh, that's the shot from the point, and the Islanders drive towards the net, and Tim Thomas makes the initial save and is able to cover it up. But a good shift by the Islanders is that fourth line goes to work with the good forechecking, the good cycling. Matt Martin keeping his feet moving. As you see the tussle going in behind the net. Always a battle in front of the net. Mentioned at the start of the show that the Florida Panthers have good size, so the Islanders were going to have to battle. Well, that man there, Weaver, is not the biggest guy on his Florida Panther team, but... For lack of size, he has a lot of tenacity, a lot of heart to his game, but a good strong shift for the Islanders. Sezika's line, Islanders need to see more of that. Now Barkov, with Islanders all over him, gets into the Islanders' zone, put it off Tavares' skate, allowing Donovan to play it up to Tavares. And now Gilbert plays it back behind the Florida goal. Round to Campbell. Panic with a blind pass, picked and off. Another turnover by the Panthers, so you talk about structure, that's not very good structure when you're throwing it up the middle for your, the opposition. The boys behind the net with Bergenheim, who got it loose, wrapped it around, there's going to be a penalty here to the Islanders. Going to be holding. I'm not sure who's getting it. you think the Islanders are getting this, Howie? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Tim Thomas did, because he sprinted to the Florida <laughs> bench, so... It's going to be Calvin DeHaan, two minutes for holding. I, I didn't see it around the net, but you're right. Tim Thomas recognized it in a hurry. And there's DeHaan as he's in behind. There's the push. Still waiting for the hold. Just a good one-on-one -on -one battle. 
I'm not sure where the holding is, frankly. Well, gives the Panthers the power play. Islanders got passed a five on three when they were down in the first period. Now it's Bukestad checked by straight. Rabner sends Sezikis ahead. This is Sezikis working on Campbell here. Campbell stays with Sezikis, but Casey's able to take a little time off that clock. And the Islanders quickly will change the penalty killers. Now he kept the puck in ahead of him right behind the goal line, and that's what you need to do. Kopetsky was trying to get a stick from the Florida bench. Still trying to get one. Now he's just going to change. Now Upshaw for the drop for Bukestad. Back at the point, Campbell trying to set up a screen in front. Pushes it back out to Bergenheim. And his pass intercepted by Clutterbuck. Now Clutterbuck has some room. Now throws one wide of Thomas, but Nielsen gets it back. And with the Islanders needing to change, he just tucks it in behind the Florida net. And Cal Clutterbuck was talking about making sure those passes didn't go through the seams, and he was in perfect position. And that's what you call good penalty killing, forcing them into doing something you want them to do. Boys works it out to the point. Stepping up is Kulikov. Holding. Now to Jovanovsky. Barkov. Down low, Bergenheim across, Poland got over. The rebound is loose. Barkov to Jovanovsky. That's a big save by Poulin as he had to get back across the goal crease to cover what was a wide open half of the net. Yeah, tremendous save by Kevin Poulin. Bergenheim with a good pass. That was Barkov, I believe, that got it over on that right-hand side. And no, it wasn't a one-timer. Good puck movement. Watch the pass come across to the right-hander. That's Gilbert. He just shoots it right away. Didn't get a lot on it, but Kevin Poulin read it rather quickly. There's the quick pass down low, cross ice pass. And Kevin Poulin's in there in plenty of time. He recognized what was going on and good anticipation. So Kevin Poulin learning about the power play, learning about the puck movement and the anticipation needed. 26 to the power play. That shot by Huberdeau was blocked. And so the Panthers with one rush left. With the power play here. As Gilbert plays it up the left wing. And the return to Matthias. And Kulikov has to grab it back in center, and that's going to take care of the power play. Here's Dahan out of the box. Kulikov steers it in behind the Islander net. Panthers changing on the move. Dahan waiting for an outlet. Threw it right through the middle of the ice. Played by Campbell. Well, a good penalty kill can, uh, can sometimes give your team some momentum, and the Islanders did a nice job. Overdo shot deflected by Parker. Oso withstands a challenge from Barkov. Well, a nice spinorama move along the board. Salo Daniela Savard back in Chicago days. 13.42 to go, second period. 13.42 remaining in the second period. January 22nd on MSG, it's courtside conversation from the dinner table as J.B. Smoove returns with guests Nick Cannon, Cedric the Entertainer, Jeff Ross, and Carl Banks. Four courses, uh, courses with J.B. Smoove. Leon from Curb Your Enthusiasm, presented by Visa. The new season begins January 22nd at 11 p.m. on MSG Network. Pretty good character J.B. Smooth created on that show. Absolutely. Brian Campbell, round to the corner. He uses a different style of language on the Four <laughs> Courses show, though. A little bit different. A little bit like mine, you mean? How Some, you no, no, that no, same no. type of vocabulary? No, better. No, no, yours is better. I mean, it's all up, all upbeat. Tavares trying to play it down the boards. And now, boys, in the Florida zone. He chips one down low. Bergenheim takes off after it. Took a hit. Boys, a little spin move. Put it out in front. Blocked away by Poulin. And then a rebound sent wide to Branson against Oposo. And Tavares sends Oposo down the right wing with room. Danik open on the left. Tavares, toe drag, and a shot goes wide. And now, boys. Both teams changing on the move. 
A nice move by Kyle Laposi. Right, Howie, they were told that he was able to get it by Jovanovski, but wasn't able to clear himself enough to get a real hard shot at Thomas. Fanek was going to the net, trying to create a little distraction. Sezikis. Now to Martin, plays it back to Donovan. The Branson breaks the play up down low, and Gox sends a blind pass out to center that winds up in an offside play. Looking for Herbert as he was driving through the middle. But uh, again, watch the, the good move. Tavares gets it over to Kyle Apol, so you're going to watch him as he toe drags. You see Govanovsky turned his skates to the left, and that allowed Kyle Apol to, to come in. Most of the time, how you see defensemen back straight up, they keep their skates parallel to north-south. Govanovsky turned his skates towards the board, and that allowed Kyle Apol to be able to pull the puck and get to the inside. Jovo still trying to work with his... Trying to get his timing down. He was out a long time. Two months of practice. He had that hip replacement surgery. First guy really to try that type of surgery and come back and play. So that was a, a tough road to hold. But he wanted to play. You know, he's got two more years in his contract now. And he just wanted to play and did not just collect his money. He wanted to try to add something to this team. He only played six games last year. This is his fifth game this year. Round around by Chris March. Obviously, Horacek is really trying to monitor and regulate Jovanovski's minutes, particularly early on in his return. Yeah, I'm sure that the back-to-back -back games will be out of the question. Now Grabner fires one that's blocked, and Karam's over the line and out. Uh, Karkner comes back to play it. Well, the Islanders, I think, have a chance to change the momentum of this game. Both teams are kind of like in between right now, and the Islanders can find a way to get a goal, pick up their tempo. I think they get themselves back into the game. Strom looks for Bailey. And now Campbell. Up for Bukestad. Nelson went after Bukestad, who keeps going. They'll take it into the corner, and then work it around to the side for Upshaw. Scotty Upshaw snaps it back to the boards. It's picked off by Nielsen. And now McDonald to center. That's broken up. McDonald took a hit. In comes Bukestad for Florida. And he made a blind pass. Fancy hockey. Now Bukestad. Save made by Poulin. And sent out of the zone. A big shift for Bukestad. Seemed to have the puck the whole time. Do you think the Florida Panthers had their number one and number two sentiment for a long time? One guy's an 18-year-old. The other guy's a 19-year-old. Six foot four and six foot six. I'd say they have that position locked up for a while. Boys put it all the way through the slot and back down into the Florida zone. Weaver laid it across with the Islanders changing the defense. Barkov sent to the boards by DeHaan. Donovan played it up the board. That was stopped by Barkov, who works and then gives it away to Oposo. Vanek racing ahead, to Tavares trailing. The pass to Vanek, just a touch too wide, but he recovers. Put it out in front, Boys is there. And now Bergenheim trying to get away from DeHaan, who got the worst of it, and Barkov brings it in. Covered by Oposo. Oposo had a pass go off Barkov's skate. Fans trying to get their team back into the game. As I said, the team got a little stagnant. The Islanders can find a way to score a goal, generate a little more motion, a little, create a little energy of their own. And certainly find their way back into the game. Kyle Oposo on that pass to Thomas Vanek didn't have much of an angle. And threw it in the only place he could, which was just a little ahead of Thomas. Poulin finds Kortner, and now Sezikis. This lifts one down looking for Martin. Icing's been waved off from Martin. Brings it around, McDonald, all the way to the near boards to Hickey. Thomas Hickey, checked by Gotch, who got it loose. And it's Marcel Gosch, and over the line. Quick shot up high on Poulin. And the mask came off, and that means the whistle, as they'll put Kevin Poulin's equipment back together. 8.23 remaining, second period. The New York Islanders' upcoming schedule is brought to you by Lexus. A couple more to go on this road trip Thursday night in Tampa. 
Saturday night in Philadelphia, which effectively will be the first of a home and home, which will conclude Monday afternoon. Martin Luther King Day. Oh, on ice communication, how he is always really important as we watch this replay. Look at Casey Suzikas right in this area here. You can see he's pointing towards straight to take him. Well, I talk about communication. Straight moves over, or, excuse me, Cartner moves over and is able to isolate that shot on that up and around the shoulder. That's always a tough rebounder control. Sezika shooting. That went wide. Got caught on the mesh. McDonald centered. Martin broke it up. Rebound. Stopped somehow in front. Thomas had help from the defense. It was good. Branson. And now Matthias again straight in the corner. Shore got knocked down. Matthias against straight. Played by Shore to give Matthias a little room. Now Gabranson in. Matthias put it right to the feet of the referee. And that prevented the puck from going around the boards. Shore was in behind the net, which is the automatic out. Good play by Matthias. But you're right, he hit the referee's skate. Allowed the Islanders to escape their own zone. Upshaw. Works it to Fleischman in the far corner. Back towards Upshaw and jumping in is the defenseman Gilbert. And so Strom winds it. Covered by Fleischman. And Andrew McDonald doesn't clear. This is Campbell. And Fleischman hits the trailer. Upshaw, he drove it wide. Now Bukestad. Round to the far side. Upshaw gets to it first. Scotty Upshaw fed the slot. Fleischman missed. Brian Strait was in good position there to block that shot. Prevented from getting on the net. But a couple of good opportunities for the four of the Panthers. Creating some odd man rushes and getting the puck in a real good shooting area. Bergenheim snaps one. That's stopped by Poulin. And that gave Kevin Poulin an opportunity to slow the play down. Scotty Upshaw had a heck of a chance, but there's a shot by Casey Sezikis. Islanders battling down low, getting the puck out in front. There's a golden opportunity, really, for Matt Martin. And Tim Thomas just seems to find a way to get in front of those pucks. He says to have that orthodox style. It's a little bit crazy, but he gets that body in front. And it's not how, it's just if. And he does an awful good job of it. Well, now to Han, to Vanek. This pass intercepted in center, brought back in the boys. Takes a hit from Hickey. Donovan met behind the net by Bergenheim. They had boys alone in front for a moment. By the time the puck got to him, he was at a bad angle. Boys against Ahan. He snaps it out to center, waiting for it is Vanek. He's got it, now starts ahead. Thomas Vanek into the Florida zone. Across to Tavares, puts a move on Kulikov. And it's kept in by Donovan. Now Vanek in front to Varis. He was bottled up. Panthers again. Recover the puck. Look, and move it out with Bergenheim. I was going to say how it looked like Weaver put a pretty good hook on John Tavares and got away with it. John was wide open on the far side of the net on a nice pass by Thomas Vanek. Gilbert throws it back in. Blasts it hard around. It hit Kopetsky. Stays in. Kopetsky recovers the puck. Now gets it again and snaps it over the net. Protected at the line by Campbell for Gotch. Huberdeau to Gilbert. And now Kopetsky's pass comes out of the zone. Florida Panthers have picked their pace up. They're going to be a penalty interference call on the Florida Panthers, I believe. So the Islanders will get a power play with 5.05 remaining second period. So the Islanders will get a power play, which is brought to you by New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. Marcel Gosh is off. Well, that man, he's all over this power play. And, you know, you don't worry about statistics or where you are in the league. All you focus in on is this power play, because this really would get the Islanders back into the hockey game, give them a little momentum, a little energy to maybe go into the third period. As bad as the Panthers special teams have been, their penalty killers lately have been good, killing off 14 straight. Over the last six games, they've got a two-on-one developing. Matthias played it across. He was looking for sure. It missed. And now they've got to hustle back as the Islanders move up. Nielsen into the zone. Drops for Oposo. 
Kyle Oposo works the corner. Now to Tavares. That went over his stick, recovered by Nielsen. Back for Tavares. That's chipped away from Nielsen, recovered by Vanek. Fires one that actually hit his own man, Oposo. And comes to Kulikov for the clear. And the Islanders never did get settled on that first, uh, first attempt. Puck was bouncing on him and did get a shot towards the net, Howard, but it wasn't a very solid looking power play early on. Donald to Tavares. Nielsen goes after it against Jovanovski. That's pitched on the backhand, not out. McDonald took a hit, though, and that's going to send Upshaw in. Upshaw shoots, he scores! A shorthanded goal for Scotty Upshaw. And the Panthers lead 4-0. Well, you knew is that when you're the top guy on the umbrella on the power play, you've got to be 100% sure. Andrew McDonald tried to knock that puck down. A lot of pressure by Scotty Upshaw, and he was able to get that puck past Andrew McDonald. And away he goes. He's off to the races. Good speed. Never slowed down. He made a tremendous move. There's the battle right there. Andrew McDonald knows he's in trouble. Good hard skating. Never really had a chance to get his feet or his head up on that play, but just knew he wanted to go to the forehand. Again, watch Upshaw. Let's just see if he takes a little look. Well, the ref's in my way a little bit. But a nice move by Upshaw, and it's a terrible goal for the Islanders. Back the other way comes Nelson. Still 43 seconds remaining to the Islander power play as they've given up their fourth shorthanded goal of the year. For the Panthers, their second shorthanded goal scored. Thomas Kopetsky has the other. Well, the puck just seems to be bouncing, Howie. You mentioned earlier with the problems with the ice. Nelson put it in front. Thomas gathers it in. It'll be a face-off in the Florida zone. Well, the Islanders really haven't had a whole lot of penetration. I mean, yeah, there's been some shots toward Tim Thomas, but it hasn't been as we've seen in the past over the last half a dozen games where they've really been driving towards the net and, you know, showing some domination in the offensive zone. It's been just kind of an in-between game for the Islanders and really headed by a lot of mistakes. And that's the reason they're down 4 nothing. So it's the seventh of the year from Upshaw. Campbell assisting on the shorthanded goal at 15-59. Uh, Donovan comes back to play it. Donovan gets to the red line. Penalty about to expire. Here's Gosh out of the box. So the team's at full strength. Tavares a shot. Thomas the save. And he gets the whistle. That puck came quickly out of the corner and found Tavares alone in front. And Tim Thomas didn't even see the original shot. He was just in position. He's a big body. And Tavares, all he could do was get his stick on it and try to guide it in towards the net. Watch the quick movement. Thomas Vanek trying to get it right out front. There's the reflex action by John Tavares. And of course, Tim Thomas is going to go down right away. There you go. The quick movement gets down, covers the low part of the ice. Becomes the big blocker and is able to prevent that shot. John Tavares, not enough time to react to get the puck up in the air. That's a tough play. All you can do is try to get your stick on it and get it towards the net. Rock and Sezikis on the draw. Slammed off the boards, but not out by Jovanovski. But then Hickey gave it up. Jovanovski, one quick little pass, got the Panthers out of their own zone. Now he jumps into the play, finds himself down low with the puck just missing him. But he goes to the other side and recovers the puck. Pretty good play by Jovanovski. Now in his younger days, he was very much an offensive defenseman. Maybe another penalty here. That looks like a game that's going to go to the Florida Panthers for tripping as they knock down Matt Martin who was off to the side of his own net. Hard foul for tripping. So Huberdo goes in, getting that leg out. And the Islanders go back to the power play. Yeah, absolutely. Matt Martin was able to evade him. And Huberdo, who has struggled this year, Howie and his coach talked about him learning to play away from the puck. How often have we heard that and play harder to get the puck back? Good player when he has the puck, but not nearly as effective. Doesn't work nearly hard enough when he doesn't have it. So often what you hear about guys who have deficiencies defensively, isn't it? Not that they're not technically sound or they don't necessarily know where to go, but it always comes back to the work, the effort. It just seems to be so much a part of the defensive end of the game for a forward. Also snaps it wide. This Islanders power play is brought to you by New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. Islanders are just not sharp in handling the puck. They just mishandled it. And not some very good decisions. So just overall, whether you're talking about their skating, their puck management, or their 
thinking process. They just have not had a very strong first two periods. McDonald going to the net. Thomas steers it aside. Nielsen plays it back. Oposo to Tavares. Todrak put it through the goal crease and is recovered by Oposo. Tried to center for Tavares. Now Nielsen along the boards. He's under pressure and lost the handle. So it was cleared by Fleischman. Panthers have had good speed the entire game. They've, for the most part, been able to get to the puck first on the Islanders, forcing them into some bad decisions or fumbling of the puck. Strom. Now to Oposo. Nelson knocked down. Bailey back to get it. And that's a hand pass. And there was a glove touch along the boards and that results in a hand pass that will bring the face off outside. And Brock Nelson felt he was knocked down and really didn't pass the puck. Just probably inadvertently just touched it and shushed it forward a little bit. Good hard work. Watch Brock Nelson. He gets knocked in behind the corner. We'll just see where that hand pass comes. Not sure there was a hand pass there. Looked like the Allen's able to get in there and play it. And so from the draw, Kopetsky Sends it back to Weaver, and he fires it all the way down as we reach the final minute of the second period. Linesman was trying to blend himself right into the glass on that slap shot by Weaver. No way for those guys to go when you're about 10 feet up in front of the on-rushing shooter. There's Clutterbuck shooting. Thomas holds on. It'll be a face-off in the Florida zone. Now Clutterbuck never shy about shooting, and I think that's a good thing. We've seen already the goals go in off of people's skates. But Tim Thomas looks very sharp tonight. The Islanders haven't had a lot of great opportunities. They've had 17 shots towards the net, two or three real good opportunities, but Tim Thomas has been ready for the task at hand. His defensemen have done a nice job in clearing the rebounds or protecting the net for their goaltender. Islanders control the draw. DeHaan. The penalty winding down. Wrist one that's tipped off the side of the net. Martin recovers Thomas down. They score. McDonald. Colin McDonald just after the penalty expired. Puts away a puck that Tim Thomas couldn't control. The Islanders are on the board and the Panthers now lead 4-1. to one. Well, this has been one of the better lines for the Islanders tonight. And again, they always keep it simple. They know their jobs. They get the puck in deep. They drive it towards the net. They're able to get the puck back to the defenseman. Dahan and what's... Martin, as he goes towards the net, creating the screen, got a bit of a deflection, works hard to get it back, and there's the quick pass out to Colin McDonald, who puts himself in position. Watch him stop there at the side of the net. Now watch him. He's going to back up, create a little time and space for himself, and a beautiful pass by Matt Martin. So maybe this will get the Islanders going because they haven't had a lot going for them for the most part of these two periods. So 4-1 to one now, 16 seconds remain to the period. Boys behind the net against DeHaan. And the Islanders have certainly made a habit of coming from behind during this great streak that they've been on. They've come back from as many as three, and that's what it'll be when the third period starts as they cut a four to nothing Florida lead to four to one on the goal by Colin McDonald. Well, you're right, Howard. They have scored three goals in a, in a period. They've done it in the third period. It's not an easy task, but certainly they're a confident bunch of guys that know that they've done it before they can do it but they're going to have to have a whole lot better skating than what they've exhibited so far in these first two periods so four to one panthers at the end of two periods coming up our second intermission report peter will chat with tom gilbert of the panthers take you around the national hockey league and show you highlights of the second period as well so three to nothing after one the team's trade goals in the second period four to one panthers after two Getting set for the third period with the Panthers leading the Islanders 4-1. to one. Tonight on MSG, the Knicks' Tyson Chandler opens up about playing in New York as he joins Fran Healy on the game 365. Presented by Hagar tonight at 10.30 on MSG. And as we have a moment before the period begins, we'll revisit our trivia question brought to you by Cadillac. All right, let's go back to 1990. Only five defensemen have been drafted first overall. Now, one of them was in 1994, and that fellow's on the ice tonight. The Panthers are glad to have Ed Jovanovski back 
But in between, you had a guy who played for the Islanders in Roman Hammerlick, another who played for the Islanders in Brian Burrard, Chris Phillips, an Ottawa Senator, and Eric Johnson. They're all good players. They've all had real nice careers. Brian Burrard, of course, using his eye early on. That certainly affected his career. But Ed Jovanovski coming back off what we talked about earlier on that major surgery. And he's happy to be back. Boy, he said it was a long recovery. The last two months, just practices, was anxious to play. So it's just, and it is the worst thing for a hockey player, Howie, just to, just to not play. And he's happy to be back and contribute in any way, shape, or form. And he's the captain of the team. But, you know, I want to show you, how you know, the Almonds have played really well lately. They're 8-2 they're and two in their last 10 games, 16 points. And you can see the teams in the yellow. Those are the teams that are in the playoff position thus far. And you can see you know, how well you have to play and how difficult it is to play catch-up hockey. The Omers are 8-2, and two, and they're going to have to continue to play that style of hockey to, to catch up because everybody else continues to win. The Rangers 7-2-1. and one. Look at Philly 7-3, and three, Columbus 7-3. and three. So you know, early on in the season, Howie, I said, don't get into the position where you're having to chase to get into the playoffs because it's really tough and the Islanders are finding out just how tough it really is. They do have time on their side. This is game number 48, so there is still 34 to go after this one. But for the Islanders, a big challenge here in the third period. Can they outdo their recent selves with the comebacks that they've had? They immediately move into the Florida zone. Thomas Vanek throws it out in front. It's tipped towards the boards. And the Panthers get to the Islander line. Well, yeah, can they set the record of coming back again for the seventh time? There's a drive by straight that's held. Let's talk about those eight straight in which you came from or come from behind or just road wins, period. Road wins in a row in the 1980-81 season, the second Stanley Cup season. You have any particular memories about that streak? No, not, not a, you know, not a, not a whole bunch. It's just, you know, that, that was a team that just played, you know, so well and so often, Howie. And, you know, as I mentioned once before, it's just that, you know, when you got things going, you don't even think about it. You just continue to, to, to continue to play hockey. And I'm, I'm not sure we kept coming from behind. I think we just were always in the lead, if I recall correctly. We didn't get behind all that often with that, that team in 80-81. I think we won 15 straight games, too, during uh, yeah. that, uh, that particular season, That, that was the next season. The yeah. next season. So... That was a pretty strong team, and the Islanders are, you know, in uncharted territory right now. Thomas will hold on. It's always fun to reflect on those seasons and mindsets and how teams' mindsets change. We've talked about the Islanders having gone now from being a fragile team to one that, despite trailing tonight, has to have more confidence. You saw a team when you got there in 1980. We're talking to Bill Torrey about this earlier tonight. They weren't quite ready to win yet because they didn't think they could win yet based on some stuff we talked about before. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was the first thing that, uh, you know, that I noticed when I joined that hockey club is that it, you know, it didn't have the confidence to, to play in those tight situations. We see Carter gets a shot on net, and that, they had to learn to win. And, you know, that was remarkable. I think that's one of the things that the honors have sort of turned around you know, from the early part of the season to now is at least in this environment, in this situation, during the regular season, it seems they're a lot more comfortable in being behind and they can find ways and figure it out and play well enough to, to win hockey games. But this has just not been a good formula for them. I mean, it's going to catch up to you eventually. You cannot get behind game after game. And that's the, that's the consistency word that all the coaches are talking about is how do they get their teams to play consistent game after game after game where it becomes a, a, a really a, a habit for 40 games. You know, you throw the odd clunker in there, but something that becomes more a regular part of your game. Well, now Jack Capuano will send out the Zizekas, Martin, McDonald combination as the Panthers have changed and they've got the shoreline on. Partner down the boards. Huck recovered though by Barch and dribbled back towards Thomas. And now to Branson. Fires one that may or may not have caught a piece of the that go into the bench area yeah, it looked like it went off the glass and then into the bench area but well, you talk about consistency and this is the line that gives you that consistent effort game after game they don't have many bad nights and, and their game is pretty simple they like they, they chip it in and then they go crash along the boards matt martin and colin mcdonald and casey Sezika. So they're all very good four checkers they they love to battle along the boards and they understand exactly what their job is they don't deviate much from it 
and they don't get too fancy. They understand that, you know, if they're not keeping the puck down low and they're not keeping the puck under their net, Howie, they're not going to play. Good job by McDonald there on the four check as he continues to wrestle with the Branson. It's worked loose. And Jovanovski in tight against or with his goaltender, really. Now takes a couple of shoves. Martin got a piece of Jovanovski from behind. And now it's Martin having to be separated from Chris Barch. Uh, both a couple of tar tough guys. Barch will certainly drop it. Jovanovski was very tough in his youthful days. A lot of guys, when they're, they fight in the first five or six years, they kind of settle down and pick their spots a little bit more. But Jovanovski didn't have anywhere to go with it, and Colin McDonald comes in a little late, and Joe took a little bit of exception. Barch grabs Martin right away. You talked about when you have fights in the old days, and you look for your partners. Well, on the other side of the ledger, it's not always us guys that don't like to fight, and, and you know, we're looking for the nice, easy, easy guys to line themselves up with. Well, the tough guys, generally speaking, they look for the tough guys. You would certainly hope so. <laughs> Well, I've been in a few mismatches in my in my time, and, uh, and believe me, the outcome is not very good. <laughs> Tavares will take the draw here against Barkov, and those lines have been matched up against each other all night. Certainly, the coach uh, Horachuk is very comfortable with uh, with, with that matchup. Vanek put it through the slot, and then Oposo had his shot. Busted by the stick of boys. Well, that's one thing about Barkov. He's very good in his own zone, uh, much better than you would think for a young 18-year-old. But his father was a KHL player in Russia, uh, Alexandra, who, who, you know, obviously did a lot of coaching with him. So he played in Finland, so he's got a lot of good DNA in, in, in his soul. So he's learned to play the game the, the proper way. His mother's a pretty good, was a very good Olympic basketball player. So all kinds of ability there, and you can understand where the size comes from. Islanders control. Tavares went down. Back up to recover the puck. Tight with Oposo. But now Kopetsky sends Huberdo out. Huberdo to the Islander line. Lines it in behind the net. Tavares is there. Up the middle. Too far for Oposo. And that'll be an icing. And they'll bring it back into the Islanders zone. And Kyle Oposo skating into the hole. Trying to give Tavares an opportunity to lay it on a stick. That's something that... You know, all players have to do you can't just stand there and expect the puck to get land on your stick you got to get into a hole get in the opening and John Tavares missed his pass doesn't miss very many passes so from the draw Andrew McDonald steers it around the boards a bouncing puck that was missed by Gilbert the defenseman out comes Thomas and he pokes it up to Huberdo Huberdo tangled up with a poso steals it back drives towards the slot not trailed by Nielsen, he put it out in front, Vanek scores! Four to two, Florida, with a ton of time to go. 17-22, remaining in the third period, and here come the Islanders again. Well, you talk about, you know, not getting your feet moving. Huberdo gets caught standing still, and Kyle Oposo, he's got his feet moving, and he creates the turnover at the blue line, and then away the Islanders go. Kyle Oposo, that's the steal already, then he gets the puck over to... Thomas over to Franz Nielsen, excuse me, and Franz Nielsen, what a great pass. Thomas Vanek has got his stick down on the ice, but Franz Nielsen with the good speed, short side pass, and Tim Thomas, it's tough for him to follow when that puck looks like it might be a wraparound, and here comes the Islanders. Weaver mishandles it. Grabner in the corner throws it out towards the net, but Thomas grabs that, and now, whereas the Islanders had a lot of pressure in this game, just trying to find some semblance of equilibrium, now they've scored the last couple, one late in the second, this one early in the third, and now we'll see how the Panthers play really for the first time tonight under pressure, Butch. Now we talked about, you know, having to score an early goal in the third period, get a little energy from it, and you're right now the Florida Panthers have to handle the energy, the, the momentum of the New York Islanders, and we'll see how they react. Oh, Karkner along the boards. At least that was... Bailey in the yeah. corner there with Kulikov. That's <laughs> just like a bit of a scrum in there, three on three. Worked around to the near side and pitched out of the zone. It was Donovan being knocked down. Vanek 16th for Nielsen and Oposo at 2.38. And Donovan fires it back in. Gabranson takes it in the corner. Jovanovsky slaps it around, but there's Karkner. Fires it back to Strom. Looking for Nelson. But Branson goes to Nelson. 
Jovanovski played it up the boards. Nelson picked it off. And now Boys brings it out for Florida. Lofts it softly into the Islander zone. Hickey off the boards for Clutterbuck. Jovanovski saw that coming, made a good play. Bergenheim put it through the crease, recovered now by Barkov. Barkov slips it back to Boys. He threw it through the slot. Panthers had a player coming off the bench. It was Campbell. And now the Islanders send it back into the Florida zone. And Hickey blocked that shot from the point. Was able to chop it out into the defensive zone of the Florida Panthers. Ryan Strom sends one to Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, I think, lost that one, Harry. Almost went in on him. Kept at the line now. Bergenheim threw a hip out on... Sezikis. Oh, and McDonald working in the corner. Gilbert double team. And it's the Islanders creating all the pressure now. Kept in at the line by Strait. He took a shove from Shore. And now Barkov plays it in. Well, the Florida Panthers are having to chip it in and then change, so they're not able to get any pressure on the Islanders. It's a bad cycle to get into. Now Oposo, the right side, turned the other way by Gotts with the Islanders changing. Both defenders were at the near side, but it's Donovan on the puck. Shore lost his stick. He's replaced by Upshaw. Oposo knocked down, and the puck thrown to the boards. Matthias couldn't clear it out. Taken back by Oposo. His pass didn't get to Tavares. And Kopetsky exchanges with Gosh. Kopetsky just backhands one down low that Oposo cuts off and now Tavares for Vanek. Tavares goes to the net. Vanek recovers the puck, put it out in front. It's intercepted by the back checking Gosh. He was knocked down and he just plays it across the ice. On comes Matthias. Islanders changing on the move as are the Panthers. Bukestad against Karkner in the corner. This is Bukestad, number 27. For Upshaw. Now Fleischman. The first concerted zone time. There's going to be a penalty to the Islanders here. A stick came up on Fleischman. Gahan is going to get a high, look, a high stick in penalty. As you're right, how his stick came up as he was trying to check him. So the Panthers will have a power play, 13-39, remaining third period. Well, the Florida Panthers lead the Islanders 4-2, and that man might be in there for the next four minutes. Once to Han as he's on Fleischman, you can see the stick come right up into the visor face area. I'm not sure why it's a four-minute penalty, how, you know, unless he cut him. Usually you have to draw blood. I guess it's whether it's on purpose, might have something to do with it. So the Islanders down for four minutes, a double minor anyway, as Boys plays it back to Campbell and across, and Poulin got an arm on the one-timer by Fleischman. It's the Panthers' fourth power play. They're 0 for 3. They work it down low, and Fleischman just missed the net. Now Boys with McDonald falling down. Fleischman a shot blocked, and now Grabner starts ahead with Sezikis. Grabner to the slot, shoots, Thomas the save, he'll hold, and he gets a shower. Uh, good play by Michael Grabner to shoot the puck. Casey Sezikis wasn't really going to be open. Good hard work by the two of them as they raced up the ice. Tim Thomas was playing the shooter all the way. As you can see where he makes that save, he's out above the crease, and that's one thing Tim Thomas will give you. Again, good speed by Sezikis and Grabner on the forehand. Look how far out Tim Thomas is, not much room left get his feet up above the crease. Panthers now 0 for their last 20 on the power play, including the five on three that the Islanders killed in the first period. Now their special teams are not very special. Jovanovski, as Donovan had fallen down, just put it up high in the slot. It was grabbed back by Nielsen and then set across it all the way down by Donovan. Yeah, well, on the power play, I mean, the one of the key elements to a power play is your entry. You don't want to turn it over. Worst case scenario, you want to at least get it in deep like that. <laughs> uh, the Panthers go after it, but McDonald got to it first and steers it all the way down. 
Heads up play by Andrew McDonald. A lot of times you just whip it around the boards and hope it gets out. Andrew had an extra half second, was able to square his shoulders up the ice and zip it 200 feet. Opetsky slides it in. After it is Barkov, hustles it around to the far side to Butte stand and then back to the blue line. Kulikov, Barkov waiting, he's got it. Butte stand. We've got Kopetsky in front. Uh, he vacates the area, and goes behind the net to take Gilbert's pass. Centering feet, Barkov was knocked down. Kulikov jumps in. Andrei Kulikov to Kopetsky. And that's missed by Bukestad. Gilbert can't keep it in, as that would have been offside. And now Thomas has to make a decision. He comes out. Kulikov trying to clear Kant. But uh, Grabner couldn't control the bouncing puck. We're into the second half of the double minor. In comes Barkov, across to Bergenheim. Centering feed went off the post, I believe, from Boys. Bergenheim has it again. Wrap around. poulin has got that. There'll be a face-off in the Islander zone. Good shot by Sean Bergenheim as he had Brad Boys going towards the net. I think that one goes off of Boys' stick and goes right in behind Kevin Poole. And Tim Thomas was racing out just a few seconds earlier. Watch Tim Thomas as he loses. His stick goes flying into the corner. And Islanders aren't able to take advantage of that situation. But you know, as we watch him skating right, rushing all the way over, picking the puck up. Uh, he was on the power play, so not nearly as much risk as there might be under normal conditions. Panthers control the draw. At the line, Campbell fires, stick save, Poulin bounces nearby. Boys keeps it alive. Now Campbell with a return. Another one to Boys. He didn't get all of it, but Poulin did. Poulin a little bit out of control going back and forth as the Florida Panthers were moving the puck rather well. And that quick shot by Brad Boys. Poulin coming across, shows his cat-like reflexes. Watch him go to his right as he's trying to follow it. Left. And then back right as he slides there, keeps his glove up. Good save by Kevin Poulos. Again, you can see how he has to push all the way across, going back and forth, trying to maintain his balance. That's a good anaerobic workout for Kevin Poulin. Down to a minute 28 on the Florida power play. Upshaw back of the blue line, slides it gently to Campbell. Hard feed. Referee was almost the one who got clipped by it, but the Panthers keep moving. Fleischman. Now to Upshaw, wrists one down low, McDonald blocked that. Upshaw's got it again. Long drive, Fleischman, that missed the net. Takes a big carom that's missed by Campbell and allows Sezikis to come out. He's got Grabner with him. Grabner going straight to the net. Sezikis looks for Grabner, but it was broken up by the defense. The, the Panthers' effort to come out too quickly, they don't control the puck. And now straight under pressure in his own zone. Panthers recover. Campbell. For Gosh, and a cross, protected by Campbell. Jovanovski shoots, covered by McDonald. 35 to the power play. That's kept in by Campbell. Campbell back at the line, across to Jovanovski. And hit a stick on the way and could not be controlled by Shore. But now it's Campbell. Jovanovski flubs it. That'll force the Panthers out of the Islanders zone. Only about 10 seconds left, Howie. So the Islanders have done a real nice job. They've had a couple of opportunities themselves. That looks like an icing call, though. Boys able to win that race. And they waved it off, and now a centering feed missed by Bergenheim. Here's DeHaan out of the box. But Kulikov keeps it from him. So the Islanders kill the double minor. Panthers give it away. Oposo couldn't hold on to it. And Weaver takes over in the far corner. Matthias, oh, pardon me, that was Barkov for Bergenheim, and then Boys. He put it out in front. Hickey was there. So up comes Oposo. That was missed by Vanek and pushed ahead for Bergenheim. Out of Boys. Florida changing. Boys trying to kill a little time and allow for the change. So it's Bukestad against Tavares. Uh, Bukestad feeds the blue line. Campbell takes it off the boards. Matthias next to get it. So Matthias muscles to the slot. Shot it wide. Gilbert was knocked down. 
Now another chance from the slot. Snapped wide by Fleischman, who gets it again. Gilbert drives one, and that's held by Poulin. 8.29 remaining, third period. Here is our game recap brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. Panthers 3 0 lead after the first, 4 0 in the second. The Islanders got one late from McDonald early in the third from Vanek. Calvin DeHaan now, five game point streak coach. And he continues to play well and create some offense for his team. And they're looking for some right now. How did a nice job on killing this penalty. Now they got to find a way to generate some offense, get themselves going again. Martin threw one across for DeHaan that he steers in behind the Florida goal. Stopped off the boards and came out off a deflection and they'll bring it into the Florida zone. You know, Kelvin DeHaan playing solid as we talked about Travis Hamannick being out with the upper body injury so it gives more minutes to guys like DeHaan and Hickey and Chris Carter's back in the back in the lineup. And, you know, one of the things you miss about Travis Hamannick is the ability for him to control his own zone and give that first outlet pass. We heard John Tavares talk about that, you know, the ability of the defense to get the puck up to the forwards, and that allows them to go down and try and create some offense. Off the draw, Tavares feeds to Han. Wrist shot stopped by Thomas. It's loose. Still loose. They poke at it. Campbell winds it around. Moving down for it is Donovan. And it's sent back to the boards for Matthias. He's met immediately by Donovan. Tavares in there as well. Continue to work it along the boards. Well, Donovan grabs it back. Now to Oposo, and he was looking for the stick of Vanek. He got Vanek's stick, but it was up high. And since an Islander touched it next, they'll bring the face off outside. Yeah, great hand-eye coordination by Thomas Vanek. Again, the Islanders win in the battle along the boards with Donovan and Tavares finally coming up with the puck. Kyle Oposo let that high wrister go a little higher than he wanted it. Obviously, you know, Forwards recognize that goalies are going to go down, so they want to get the puck up a little bit higher than normal. That was just a, about a foot too high. Thomas Vanek did deflect it, but the referee blew it down. Hence the faceoff outside the blue line. Panthers control the draw. Jovanovski played it off the boards. They wave icing off, so a straight, a straight, pardon me, he's got to move it. Branson tried to drive it back in. And now straight goes to McDonald. Bergenheim, whack at it. Thomas leaves it behind the net. Jovanovski has iced it this time. Now to bring it back into the Florida zone. I'll give jo Coach Capuano an opportunity to match lines, get a the five some out there that he things can give him the best opportunity to narrow this gap cut it in half and what's that sending Tavares out there Markov will take the face off against Tavares and Bergenheim gently sends it out of the zone now the Panthers could change a yeah, quick change uh, Peter Horacek wanting to get his match up Hoso working against Kulikov. And now Donovan drives it back in. Kulikov to the boards. Tavares took it away. Threw it in front. Broken up. Recovered by Tavares. Tavares right at the blue line. Down low. And it's pitched to the boards. Chipped by Bukestad and just out of the zone. Oso had it slapped away. And the Islanders start a change. What a play by Weaver just earlier on. Howie John Tavares trying to get it across to Vanek. Would have been an empty net play. Hickey brings it in. Drops for Grabner. Can't get a shot through. And pass by Gilbert. And only now do the Panthers get it out and it's Campbell back at the Florida line seems to be a game of inches for the Islanders they've had so many near opportunities and pucks either fumbled away or they just can't get the pass through to the to the teammate Flutterbuck was knocked down over at the other side of the ice 
And here's the play I was talking about with Weaver making an excellent watch decision. There's the slide right there. Weaver gets the stick in front. Look at Thomas Bannock wide open in front of the net. So great play by Weaver on that diving and getting the stick down on the ice. And Tim Thomas is thankful to have his defenseman make an occasional play. So Gotch will draw with Bailey. That was the plan. Gosh is thrown out. Shore takes it instead. Bailey wins it back to straight. Put it towards the net. And a carom to Nielsen. Blocked by, by Gilbert on that play, and he's, uh, he's making a quick change. Pass for Brock Nelson, intercepted by Kulikov, but he's iced it. And again, they'll bring it back in. Now the linesman... Referees are going to have to be very mindful of the fact the Panthers were in the midst of a change as that icing was called. Of course, the official score has everybody listed, and he can make the appropriate changes if need be. And the Islanders again have an opportunity to get John Tavares on uh, his line out there. And looks like John will take the face off. A lot of time, Kyle takes it on his backhand. Gotch wins it back. Ulikov steers it around. Boys trying to clear. He took a big hit from Hickey, who got the worst of it, and up comes Gosh. Good back check by Tavares. Panthers recover the puck. But now McDonald for Oposo. Up for Tavares into the Florida zone with a drop to Oposo. And that shot went wide. Sent back towards the net. Round now to Vanek. Hard feed to Oposo. Oposo finds room away from Barkov. Still looking. Now to Tavares against Weaver. Tavares put it out in front and Thomas grabs it. Now it'll be a face-off in the Florida zone. 4.51 remaining third period. After the game, get reaction from Coach Capuano and the players, plus highlights and analysis on the Islanders post-game presented by ANA immediately following the action. Well, the Islanders go to work on the on the board check. Kyle Oposo dropping it off to John Tavares. Well, watch number seven, Kulikov, as he handles Thomas Vanek, and then young Bark Barkov takes Kyle Oposo. So talk about playing good defensive hockey. Kudos to the Florida Panthers for taking their men. Florida three on two. Kulikov fed it across. And now three Panthers are in deep. And out come the Islanders, led by Tavares. Now to Oposo, closing in. Upshaw got back to make a good defensive play, but then a bad clearing attempt. McDonald fires, blocked away by Thomas, who's just now getting back into position. His defense has played really well in front of him. And again, Kulikov gets back, knocks that loose puck away. Skyla Posa was looking for that uh, rebound. Strom now in the Islanders' zone. Right up to center and driven back in by Gilbert. Butterbuck chased by Barkov. Campbell couldn't control it. So Clutterbuck has Strom going to the net, and Clutterbuck went short side and missed. And Karam's out of play. Well, the Islanders have certainly had their, their opportunities, as I, as I said, Howie. They just seem to be a half a step away or one bounce away from really scoring a whole bunch of goals. They played much better in this third period, but again, when you you know get yourself down three goals it's a it's a tough road to hoe and give the Florida Panthers lots of credit because they've been able to come back they back checked hard they they played hard in front of Tim Thomas they blocked out jumped on the rebounds and Tim Thomas has been very good but he's been helping Donovan tried to drive that puck in couldn't and Dahan chased back by gosh but the Islanders at possession, Sezikis to McDonald. He shoots, Thomas the save, and he holds on. As Matt Martin protesting, having had the stick knocked out of his hand. The Islanders fourth line again, getting the puck to the outside and allowing, lots the quick pass, and now Casey Sezikis will drive to the net along with Martin and Colin McDonald just trying to fire that puck in front, not trying to score, just looking to maybe get a rebound shot, Matt Martin was upended so he's a little upset the Islanders have had less power play opportunity so they're looking to maybe heighten their uh, or give themselves a little bit better chance with a power play we'll, we'll look to see when Kevin Poulin maybe comes out of the net now down two. Tavares line is on Dahan with a drive that was tipped 
by Oposo. Thomas trying to cover Camp. The puck sitting in the corner. Bergenheim in. Yeah, and then it's played nicely by Campbell around the boards. Boys chips it out. DeHaan threw it out. Uh, it's recovered by Barkov. Oposo's lost or broken his stick. In come the Panthers. Bergenheim, nice play with his skate to tee it up. Then he backhanded it wide. And right back comes Oposo. Angled by Campbell. Campbell. And Oposo bump. Barkov there as well. Bergenheim under pressure. And Vanek wheels it back. Donovan moves up. Had it knocked away. Panthers try to clear. Cannot. Lines up in the corner again. Long shift for this line, Howie. Oso, but up behind the net, Campbell grabs it there. And he plays it up high off the boards. This will be icing if it goes far enough, it doesn't. So the icing waved off. And now McDonald, as Poulin edges out. McDonald moves up, Poulin's going to the bench. The Islander net is empty, they have an extra skater on. The Islanders trying to gain control in the Florida zone. Cannot, McDonald brings it back. Extra skater for the Islanders. Nelson working along the boards against Upshaw. Fleischman there as well with Bailey. Gulakov under pressure. Three Islanders surround him. Now it's Nelson tangled up with Fleischman. Ryan Strom around behind the net. Grabbed by Bailey. Josh Bailey in the corner. Nielsen behind the net. Nielsen trying to slip it out. Instead to Strom. Now to Bailey. His shot blocked away. Upshaw knocked down. Islanders recover the puck. Quick shot in front, stopped by Thomas. It'll be a face-off in the Florida zone. And as it was Kulikov knocked down, Nelson having words with him. And the Islanders continue to work down low at six men to five men for the Islanders. Franz Nielsen looking for someone to give it to, quick behind the pass, and there's a shot by Bailey. Doesn't get through as it hits Nelson in front of the net, but the Islanders, good puck retrieval. And the quick movement, and that was the save again by Tim Thomas, who just has been very solid, just hasn't given the Islanders any opportunity to pound on any loose pucks. And when the Islanders have been able to elude Timmy Thomas, the defensive core and the forwards have come back hard and done a yeoman's job in, in front of him. So Coach Horacek is getting his message through to his team as they're playing a much better structured game in their own zone. They're much more aware of you know, where everybody is. Their play without the puck has been much better, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're starting to win hockey games. So the John Tavares line comes right back out. After the Islanders' timeout. And Nielsen will effectively be the extra player. And as the Islander net is empty, they have an extra skater. Actually, McDonald, Nielsen. Tavares, Vanek, and Strom. It's basically the power play with, with, with Ryan Strom out there as an extra right-hander. Islanders control the draw. Poso a shot. Thomas the save. It's loose. Nielsen clipped the side of the net. Nielsen working into the corner now. Throws it back. Now Poso to McDonald. His drive tipped wide. Goes to the boards. Nielsen's there. Around it to Tavares. Little too far. Recovered by a Poso. Now to Nielsen, double team, Kopetsky poked it away. And Nielsen back ahead to Tavares. He brings it back into the Florida zone. Thomas will hold on to that one. And there'll be a face-off in the Florida zone. Uh, again, good defensive work by Kopetsky. He's able to swat that puck away from Kyle Oposo using the long stick. Honors had to continue to have opportunities towards the net. Thomas Vanek on that point side was able to deflect it, but the Honors haven't had any kind of luck at all. Franz Nielsen trying to lift it up over the pads of Tim Thomas in a little bit tight, so no real room. And the draw deep in the Florida zone. And the Islander net empty. They have an extra skater on, and it's Oposo trying to wrap one around. It winds up along the boards. We're into the final minute of the third period. Nielsen moving up. Away from Bergenheim. Nielsen holding, waiting, put it out in front. Strom was well covered. And the Panthers clear as Barkov played it ahead. Boys racing after it with McDonald. Andrew McDonald now circles the net. 
And McDonald up for Tavares. He brings it in. Had it slapped away, but right to Strom. Now a Poso. To Strom. Ryan Strom feeds it back to McDonald. His drive missed the net. Oposo put it out in front. Boys had it in the skates. Couldn't find it. Down to 14. Tavares across. Off of Campbell. Oposo with 10. Hard feed. Centering feed. Broken up by Campbell. He clears and that'll do it. And the Islanders seven game road winning streak is over. Panthers hold on. Tim Thomas solid. As the Panthers defeat the Islanders 4-2. Well, the Panthers were solid, Howie, in all areas. They got a little sloppy early on in the first period, but once they were able to jump out in front, they took, took control of the game, and they aided by, really, by the poor play, the poor decision-making of the New York Islanders. The Islanders got a little bit of a push in the third period, but overall, it was Tim Thomas and the home team that just played much better and deserved to be on the winning end of the score. Final score for the Panthers, 4-2. So Tim Thomas had a lot to do with it. That young kid Barkov looked pretty good too. You'll note that in the third period, they weren't using him against Tavares's line the way they pretty much had his line matched up against the Tavares unit in the first period. Well, he was able to get uh, you know a couple of bets out there in, the, in crucial situations, and of course Jack Capuano was using John Tavares a lot more every second shift. So. The opportunity to, to use more people or the necessity to use more people to play against John Tavares uh, came into play. So that's probably part of the reason why Barkov didn't play. But as we noted earlier on, how he came back several times in the zone zone and was very good. But I like the way the defense played for the Florida Panthers. They were very good, very strong in front of the net and used their size to good event and good advantage. All right, much more coming up as the Panthers defeat the Islanders 4-2. Stay tuned for the ANA Islanders postgame from BB&T Center in Sunrise. Panthers win it 4-2.